Rusty has grown up. He has married a woman, Debbie, and they have two wonderful children, James and Kevin, or Kevin James, as we like to say in this movie, and uh, living just a, a very nice, you know, life in Chicago, Illinois, and he's a pilot now, and uh, they're just, you know, on the surface, this sort of perfect little family, and he's going to take them on this journey because he overhears that his that they don't want to go to the cabin anymore. Um, but uh, she she begrudgingly goes to the cabin every year. The heart is the same. The intent is the same. The um, the fact that they come up against a myriad of disasters um, on their on their journey and end up having sort of a, um, a moral moment at the end and the family comes together and that it is, you know, these, that family does come first. And I mean, those, those sort of thematic principles are through this as well, but it's, you know, still very, it's still different people, you know, different kids, different wife. Um, we meet up uh, with a lot of different incredible characters on our journey and, uh, but it, you know, we, we, of course, are all huge fans of, of vacation and the and the saga that it was, and that's why we're all here, because of what Chevy and Beverly and and all of the different children <laughs> created. I like the fact that it, she wasn't written like it was. Could have been very typical um, of the supportive wife in the car, and she's not. She's going through her own crises in in her inside of herself and in her relationship in her marriage. Um, and I love that she has a secret that we get to unveil throughout this, that Debbie Griswold was, was a naughty, naughty girl, <laughs> uh, pre-Rusty Griswold. And I love that she's, she's got spunk and she's got a mouth on her and she has an opinion. You know, she's not just going along for the ride. I like that she's, she's her own person. We always saw Rusty before. Um, was always so, you know, listen to his dad and always wanted to, you know, be right there and I, I'm with you, I support you. And he still has that, he has that feeling and he, he wants his kids to be doing what he did, you know, but they're not. And he comes up against all these walls and yet he's still, he, he's learned to have that kind of enthusiasm and that tenacity to get through all of these disasters that happen with with a, with a real go get them feeling and that things are going to work out if we just we just push through as a family. And meanwhile, you know, cut to the the three of you know, the three other members of the family who are who are miserable. They're miserable and they're selfish and they're not they're not getting it. They're not getting what he's trying to give him, you know, and then they eventually do. You have to read the room as to what kind of comedies are working right now, and the kind of comedies that are working right now actually are the ones that they've written. So um, they're very fast people. They're with, with you know coming up with new stuff right on on the fly, which is really wonderful. They really have their brains are constantly moving. Yet they they are able to write heart. Um, there's a lot of comedy writers who don't know how to do that, and I think in these movies, the one thing that we do have to emulate and we do have to uphold is that is that there is that these people do love each other enthusiasm and a, a childlike innocence and joy that is that it's it's very infectious and it's hard not to get swallowed up in it and it's wonderful to watch and he just really keeps us afloat um, as 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 you know our fictional characters and as people you know, it really starts there. Ed is a really wonderful person and, you know, they set the tone. You know, John and John set the tone and Ed sets the tone for us and it's in, so therefore, we all kind of are game for anything. There's nothing else going on in there. There's no ulterior motives. There's, there's no selfishness. It's just, it's very selfless and earnest and kind and until he's a human being and he completely unravels as, as one would. We were so lucky to have them be a part of it. And, you know, I'm a, you know, aside from vacation, um, I'm a huge Beverly D'Angelo fan. I've, um, Hair is like one of my favorite movies of all time. 
and I wanted to be her when I was a little girl. See, I have a different, like Ed wanted to be Chevy Chase. I wanted to be Beverly D'Angelo when I was a little girl from hair. And uh, so it, I was just like insanely thrilled. And then of course, you know, growing up watching Chevy and everything that he's ever done and, and his, his brand of comedy is unlike anybody else. You know, he's he invented what everybody else is trying to do. So to be able to sit at a dinner table scene with the two of them was just one of my greatest joys. It was pretty cool.